The systems that we've graphed so far in Chapter 5 have all had one solution. So if we were to graph them, they would intersect at one specific point. But in this lesson, we look at what systems look like when there's no solution, meaning if we were to graph them, they would be parallel, or if there's an infinite number of solutions where they would end up being the exact same line. So let's check out example one. Now, if you remember back from chapter four, you might know what's going to happen with these two equations, but just play along, or if you don't remember, you're in luck. So in order to graph them, you have to know slope and intercept, and I'm, I'll graph this one in the red and this one in the blue. Now, uh, the slope is 3 over 1, and the intercept is 0, 5. For this one, the slope is 3 over 1, and the intercept is 0. Oh, whoops, the intercept is 0, negative 1, or 0, 1. And for this one, the intercept is 0, negative 5. So, now we just graph. I have to make a grid. Hopefully you're using a straight edge and the more accurate your lines are, well, that is terrible, the more likely you'll see the exact intersection point. So, first find the value of B, plot it on the y-axis. Now move the slope. Up 3, right 1. And I'll also go down three, left one, so I can have a very accurate line. And here's the line. And y equals 3x plus 1. Now first find the value of b for the blue line. Plot it on the y-axis. Now move the slope up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1. And if you've graphed it correctly, then you should have two parallel lines. And we know parallel lines never intersect, but now that we're graphing them as a system, we can see that there is no solution. There's no point where they intersect, right? Like if I needed a coordinate point, there isn't one. So the answer is no solution. You can also graph this using substitution, so let's practice with that. Remember, substitution is when you plug one equation into the other. And since both of these equations are equal to y, then they must be equal to the same thing. So when we do substitution, we take one equation, and if it's equal to a variable, we plug that into the other. So since this equation equals y, and this equation equals y, then they equal the same thing, so I can say that 3x plus 1 equals 3x minus 5, because essentially I'm saying that y equals y, because y equals 3x plus 1, and y equals 3x minus 5. So let's drop a line. Um, I'll bring variables to the left and numbers to the right. So I'm going to subtract 3x from the right and bring it over to the left. And then they actually cancel. A lot of students would tell me that 3x minus 3x is x. But remember, x means 1x. And I don't have 1x. I have 0x's. So the same way that they cancel over here, they cancel over here. So all I have is 1 equals negative 5, which is ridiculous because that's not true. Um, so then this also is a way that you would see that there's no solution. So when you're doing a substitution question and you see this weird thing over here, like what? 1 doesn't equal negative 5. Then you know that there's no solution because that can't be possible. All right, this one's a word problem, so we have to write our own equations. And you notice that I haven't given you the setup. So hopefully you can use the story and write the equations yourself. It tells us that the perimeter of the rectangle is 36 units. Well, perimeter is when you add up all the sides. So I'll write the equation 4y plus 3x plus 1 
plus 2x plus another 4y plus another 2x equals 36. Remember, rectangles have four sides. And I'll just simplify that and say 8y plus 4x equals 36. All right, let's go to the triangle. It says the perimeter of the triangle is 108 units. So that's going to be 6x plus 6x plus 24y equals 108. And simplifying that, you get 12x plus 24y equals 108. Now, in order to graph, I have to have them written in slope-intercept form. So we'll go down here, and I'd like you to pause, and I'd like you to turn each of these into slope-intercept form. So hopefully you look at these and you recognize that they are, hello, obviously the same exact equation. So when you go to graph them, they're the same point. Um, so I want you to, to practice graphing it, but in theory you would at this point realize that they're the same line and you might not need to graph if the question doesn't tell you to. But let's practice anyway, so I'm going to graph and I'll put my x-axis or my y-axis here and my x-axis there and I'll go by um, halves can I? yeah one two three four five and this will go one two three four All right, um, so let's plot. First, find the value of B, plot it on the y-axis. So the value of B is 4.5 for both equations. And you have to go down 1, right 2. So down 1 is really down to 3.5, and right 2 is all the way over here. When you're applying decimals, it's a little tricky, so you just have to think about what the numbers are representing. So go down one more time, so that's from 3.5 to 2.5, and then right 2 is going to land you here. So that's my line, and I'll label it um, y equals 4.5 minus 1 half x. And the pink line would be the same line. You would have the same intercept and the same slope, so you'd have the same line. So it doesn't matter. They are the same line. And when they are the same line, the answer is infinite number of solutions. Because all of the possible values that could intersect would exist. Remember, the answer to a system is the point where they intersect, and these lines are intersecting everywhere, so they have an infinite number of intersection points. Now, you can also graph it using elimination, so let's practice that technique. So I had 8y plus 4x equals 36, and the other equation was 12x plus 24y equals 108. Now, they're not lined up because the y is here and the x is here, so I have to first line them up. 8y plus 4x equals 36. 24y plus 12x equals 108. It doesn't matter whether you put the x, y, the x first or the y first. So now we need to make them eliminate. In order to do that, I either need to turn this 8 into a negative 24 or this 4 into a negative 12. But uh, I will choose to go with the smaller number, so I will multiply this by negative 3, and then I will eliminate the x's. So I'm going to rewrite my equations. That's negative 24y minus 12x equals 36 times 3 is 108. Oh, negative 108. And then 24y plus 12x equals 108. And now when I go to add, these cancel, and these cancel, and these cancel. And I have 0 
equals zero because when things cancel, you could put a zero. We haven't, right? We've just been crossing them out, but you could put a zero. It just looks silly. Um, and when you get a, a example where everything cancels, then that's when you would put no solution. So when you get a statement that is ridiculous, like two equals five, then that's no solution. But when you have a true statement like zero equals zero or negative seven equals negative seven, then it's infinite number of solutions. So this is what it would look like for infinite number of solutions. And as always, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.